Tonight we are sharing from Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 4, from verse 1 to 9. I know that some of us don't even know when Nehemiah is in our Bibles. In some people's Bibles, Nehemiah is after Revelation. In other people's Bibles, Nehemiah is just before Exodus, meaning after Genesis. But in our official Bible, hmm, Nehemiah is after Ezra, which I also know that many people don't know. But subsequently, as we begin to study, as study to show ourselves approved by God, not by man, we will begin to know where Ezra Nehemiah and all the relatives and friends in that category are in our Bibles in Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah 4, 1 to 9. I read in the name of Jesus. Opposition to the work is the title in my Bible. Now, when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. And he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burn ones at that? Hmm. Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, Yes, what they are building, if a fox goes up on it, he will break down the stone wall. <laughs> yeah, O oh God, our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunts on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in the land where they are captives. <laughs> do not cover their guilt and do not let their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. Verse 6. So we built the wall. And all the wall was joined together to have its height, for the people had a mind to walk. But when Sambala and Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward, and that the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry, and they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as pro and he set a guard as protection against them during the day and at night. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today is opposition for reposition. Yes, opposition for reposition. The synopsis of the story of Nehemiah is that Nehemiah got a word to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, which were lying in ruins, which had been destroyed, which had, you know, gotten to a point where they had been burned. They were in the rubbish heap and nobody knew whether it was possible to actually rebuild the walls. And so when he began to rebuild the walls based on the word, based on the permission that he had gotten from the king, then he began to face opposition. And so some of the things that we are going to be considering tonight is in line with the word that we have received from God and with respect to the opposition that we are getting from man. One thing that we have to understand from this Nehemiah 4 verse 1 to 9 that we have read is the fact that some people are angry. They are bitter. They are upset. They are unhappy. They are ill at ease. When they hear that something good is happening to you, oh, that you are married, oh, that you're pregnant, oh, that you're studying, oh, that you are traveling, that you're working, that you're building, that you're serving God, that your ministry is doing well, and so on and so forth. The same way that when Sam Bala heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being rebuilt, he got angry and greatly enriched. That is his personal emotion. We cannot determine people's emotions. But one thing that we must be wary of is the fact that those emotions can produce actions. Now, number two, some people are like morning train spirits in our lives. While others are sleeping, they are not sleeping. They go from place to place to gather information spiritually and even physically. Some of them, they do the work of Radio 1 Battery. Work without pay, information minister without salary. Some people call them Radio Lagos. 
they are worse than the community radio services. They work more than CNN. They work more than BBC. They, the, these kind of people, they have this kind of mouth diarrhea to a point where they poke their nostrils into matters that don't concern them. Some of them can be referred to as Mami No No or Papa No No. They want to know it all. Those kind of people are everywhere. They are in our families. They are in our churches. They are in our communities. They are at our job sites. They are everywhere. Now, the Jews are rebuilding the walls as instructed by God. <laughs> somebody tonight, somebody listening to me, when you begin to do the thing that God has called you to do, when you begin to do the thing that God has instructed you to do, when you begin to tear down the, the altars of your father's house as Gideon did in Judges chapter 6, or when you begin to move from your father's house and go to a land that God will show you as Abraham did in Genesis chapter 12, or when you begin to move from the land of difficulty in Moab to the land that God will show you in Bethlehem, people will begin to react. People will begin to oppose you. People will begin to contradict you. People will begin to challenge you. They will begin to fight you. And these people are not supernatural human beings. They are not strange beings. They are not people whom you don't know. There are people from the family, from your friends, from your colleagues, from among the brethren, from your neighbors. These are the people. Who will come to oppose you? That is why when you see somebody who is beginning to, you know, do things differently in the house of God, you hear some brethren, they'll begin to say, ah, ah, this new sister, she thinks that she can sing more than who? She thinks that she can clean, she can dance, she can decorate more than who? We have been here ever since. Oh, this new brother, he's coming to act like a, a holier than thou. He thinks that he can usher, he can serve, he can be committed more than who? Talk is free and cheap. When people begin to oppose you like this, when you know that you heard from God and you are acting in line with the word that you have received from God, don't quit. It is the first sign to know that you are on the right track. Because in the walk with God, if you don't see Satan, question your walk. Satan will not come with two horns. Satan will come through people. After all, in the case of Job, he came through his wife, who is supposed to be his closest companion. When you begin to walk with God and you don't encounter Satan on your way, question that walk because Satan does not fight his own. He fights those who are in the opposite camp. The Jews have gotten the word to rebuild their walls. And that's exactly what they are doing. And people are beginning to get agitated. People are beginning to look for their, their companions to oppose them, to come and ask questions, to come and be, be ridicule them, to come and belittle them, to begin to tease them, to mock them, to provoke them, to jeer at them. Sambala is not doing it alone. He has looked for his companion, Tobia, and the Arabs and the others. To come and make the Israelites to feel that they are wasting their time. But the Israelites don't answer them. Nehemiah does not utter a word. Sometimes when people are teasing you and provoking you. And making you to feel stupid. Making you to feel funny. And you don't answer. It's not because you are powerless. It's not because you are naive. It's not because you are run out of options. It is because you are conscious of the fact that the battle is, the victory is yours only when the battle is the Lord's. And you are conscious of the fact that, oh, in your silence, there is a place where you can make your complaints. There is a place where you can table your, 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 your matter. There is a place where you can report the matter. And that is exactly what Nehemiah does in, in verse 4. Nehemiah begins to reposition himself. He considers himself as one who has hierarchy on his side. He channels his complaint to God. He channels his complaint in the place of prayer. Instead of confronting, quarreling, arguing, explaining, convincing, criticizing, responding, some of us, we will want to prove a point and so we will vibrate as if it is electricity that is passing through us. When you finish vibrating, what next? The victory is us only when the battle is the Lord. It is not for nothing that the Bible says, be still and know that God is God. In that your stillness, God is training you. God is giving you patience. God is removing that which is not of him. God is giving you character. God is giving you self-control. God is teaching you wisdom. God is giving you the grace to be objective, to be observant. These things will not come when we begin to run our mouths like a stream or like a tap. Nehemiah 
goes to God in the place of prayer. The same way that when people were confronting Daniel and speaking good English, oh, the king, Daniel is still praying. Daniel did not answer them. Daniel went to give his complaint, to table his complaint in the place of prayer. When Penina was vibrating and telling Hannah, Oh, Hannah, you like this. Nothing to show how many years in marriage. Hannah did not utter a word. Humility is not stupidity. But it's the consciousness that God, them that know their God, they shall be like Mount Zion. Hannah goes to the place of prayer. It is in the place of prayer that she puts her complaints. Same for Esther. There is no place in the Bible where Esther is there. Her man, her man, this is what you are doing. No, I and my maidens will fast. And the fast is what causes Haman to be hanged on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. <laughs> are we talking about David? When Shimei is abusing David and people are saying that David, just give us the instruction. Let us just cut his head. David says, no, maybe God will see and have mercy on me. When David's wives are captured, David is a, is a, is a wrestler, is a fighter, is a warrior from the onset. David does not just take upon himself to go to the battle. He consults God. He seeks the face of God because it is in the place of God that there is victory, that there is divine instruction. That is the same thing that Nehemiah does. Nehemiah goes to the place of prayer. If somebody today who is facing opposition will only go to the place of prayer. Therefore, there will be a difference. Things will turn around. This opposition will enable us to reposition ourselves closer to God. The place where we have sure victory. We need to understand that in life, some of the opposition that we face is not only physical, but spiritual. And so when somebody is opposing you in the night, you, somebody is, is chanting incantations and vowing that you will not sleep, you will not rest, you will know no peace. It is not your place. It is not my place to begin to speak good English and to begin to, you know, construct sentences that don't have an alignment, that don't have any sense. It is our place to go to the place of prayer, to immerse ourselves in the word of God because the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. When the devil came to tempt Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, it is not with good English that the devil tempted Jesus or it is not with good English that Jesus confronted the devil it is with it was with it is written doesn't Ephesians 6 verse 17 tell us that the sword of the spirit which is the word of God is necessary to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy we don't need to fight the enemy with a clash of words empty words without power we need to go back to the place of prayer. We need to go back to the word. We need to reposition ourselves on the side of God. So that when we begin to pray and, and declare that it is written, <laughs> we are sure of our victory. After Nehemiah continues, after Nehemiah has prayed and told God what he wants the, God to do to these people, because the Bible says God will do to us what he hears us say, according to Numbers 14, verse 28. And so Nehemiah has made his declarations, but he does not fold his arms. Nehemiah goes back to work, according to verse 6. The Bible says they continued to build. James 2, verse 17 makes it clear that faith without works is dead. We cannot pray all day and not act our feet. When God has given us the instruction, when God has given us the word, it is not time for us to stop because of opposition. It's not time for us to quit because of challenges, because of obstacles. It is time for us to pray and continue to act our faith. It is not time for us to slow down our pace because of opposition. It's not time for us to dim our lights because people are talking, because people are asking questions, because people are jeering, because people are teasing. It is time for us to continue to build, for us to continue to look for people who have the same mindset like we do. Because in verse 6, we are told that Nehemiah was working with the people who had the mind to walk. We need to be people who rob minds with like minds. People who are ready to walk this walk of faith till the end who are ready not to abandon the plow at some point in time, but to press on towards the goal. Because the Bible makes us to understand that faithful is he who has called us. He will not let us down until this journey, until this battle, until this assignment has come to completion. 
the people have the mind to walk, regardless of the physical barriers, regardless of, of the things that people are saying. Because one thing is certain. If there is a will, there is a way. It's not for nothing that Philippians makes us to understand that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. When we work with like-minded people, we are sure to get the job done faster, better, and easier. In Cameroon, we always say that I defy work to mean that when the eye looks at the challenges, the eye can be motivated to give up. But the hand is not afraid of the work. So in effect, we should not walk by sight, by what the eye sees, but we should walk by faith with respect to what God has told us. And then the people who are always out to hear things, according to verse 7, the Bible says they heard again. So in spite of all the things that they had done, they still have their antenna, their satellite dish, eh? their parabolic antenna is still glued to the ground to hear what is happening. And unfortunately for them, they were expecting to hear that the work has stopped. But they hear again that the work has continued and it has not just continued, it is even better than before. When you don't give in to the things that people are saying about you, when you cling to the word that God has given you, the people around you who have decided to challenge you, to oppose you, to mock you, will be shocked at the outcome. But you don't expect them to give up without a fight. The Bible says they became angry and they decided to act. When you begin to stick to the word of God and begin to experience good success and begin to do the things that God, your family members have never done before. Nobody in your community has ever done it. The brethren have never thought of it. Oh, your colleagues have never seen this kind of one before. Oh, anger, jealousy, bitterness, strife will increase. Then they will be bound to take action. The Bible says they plotted to fight against the Jews. Anger that is nurtured, that is nursed, will definitely produce fruits. And as they decide to fight, because these people who are coming as opposition, they are not builders, they are fighters. They are coming to fight the accomplishment of the word of God in your life. And so because they have decided to fight, you see that in our day-to-day -day lives, we have this kind of people around us. These are the group of people who have tried and have failed. Some of them have not even tried at all. Some of them will tell you, I've been in Europe for 50 years. I've been in America. I've been in this company. I've been in this church. I've been in this, this for 50 years. And you have come for five days. You want to do what Napoleon has left undone. We forget that our destinies are different. Our divine assignments are different. Our potential are different. The Jews are out to rebuild the world regardless of what Sambala and Tobiah think. When they decide to fight, Nehemiah still does not give in. He goes back to the place of prayer. He repositions himself again and tells God that God, this matter is your matter. I heard from you and I am acting as instructed. Take control. And what does God do? <laughs> God does not just set a security guard by day. He sets a guard by day and by night. We know that he who watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. And so if we depend on God, if our confidence is in God, if our trust is in God, we will not be attacked or we will not be touched or we will not be harmed by the arrows that fly by noonday or the deadly pestilence that flies at night. God is so going to watch over us by day and by night. The Bible did not say that maybe a weapon will be fashioned against us. It says no weapon. So it means that even when the weapon is fashioned against us, we have the assurance that it shall not prosper. Nehemiah goes to God and God gives them a night watchman and a day watchman to watch over the work that they have done. Hmm. It is time for somebody to reposition his or herself today. On the sight of God, regardless of the opposition that you're facing, regardless of the battles, the challenges, the difficulties, the obstacles, the barriers that you're going through. Reposition yourself today in the place of prayer because you have the assurance that the victory is yours when the battle is the Lord's. You have the assurance that those who are for us, those who are with us are more than those who are against us. You have the conviction that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You have the confidence that when two powers meet, 
the lesser one must bow. And so because the greater one lives in you, every opposition from wherever, as long as it has a name, it is subject to the name of Jesus. The mention of the name of Jesus will cause every spiritual and physical opposition to bow and give you victory and give you cause to celebrate and give you cause to enjoy the marriage and give you cause to have that pregnancy until full term to get that promotion to get that success in school to get that thing that your age mates your classmates your roommates your playmates your around mates have not been able to get if only we will position ourselves on the side of the lord's army in the place of prayer in the place of Bible meditation, in the place of fasting, in the place of worship, and in the place of praise. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen.